Okay. This right here, message to Representative Lisa McLean. All right. Because of your, uh, pretty much your feminist, we won declaration. All right. Because ultimately, understand something. Wanting equality. Absolutely understandable. That should be what everybody wants. When trying to go for supremacy. Not okay. All right. So declaring, we won. I am woman. Hear me roar. All right. So you know what? You want the win? Here's how you get the win. We're literally in a powder keg militarily because of the whole situation, Ukraine, Russia. Then you got, you know, Israel and Palestine. Like, it, it, it's looking like, you know, potentially World War III is about to happen. So, if on the off chance that the draft ends up happening because of military readiness being affected because of Tommy Tuberville's dumbass, are, are we going to kick the draft back in? And if we kick the draft back in, we're sending women to war, right? Biologically born women? Yes? You know? Are we going to go ahead and start, you know, blocking guys from being able to, you know, take positions as far as construction work, as far as, you know, firefighting, as far as, you know, uh, police uh, going to the police academy and becoming an officer in some form or another, whether it be, you know, a police officer, whether it be, you know, for the sheriff's office, whether it be for highway patrol? Are, are we going to do that? You know? And another factor, what about those of us that ended up going ahead, learning and training and everything, to go ahead and be like, hey, so despite the factor that, you know, ways ended up being blocked because of people wanting to not even recognize ableism, because, you know, you act like females are more oppressed than people from the disabled community, despite the blatant ignoring of the Americans with Disabilities Act, and discrimination that ends up happening against people that are disabled, you know, acting like we have no capability being able to make decisions for ourselves. How about this? All right. We will go ahead and send women to the war. All right. That'll be the first act. All right. Now understand for me, I had to, go through, like, literally, because of a whole situation of, you know, an erroneous enlistment circumstance, because of getting signed up without my fucking consent. It's like, alright, so because of being disabled, so can't actually end up, you know, being sent and deployed, that would mean I'd have to go ahead and take one of the civilian positions of, you know, taking a job that would go and allow me to still be able to help the efforts while being here, while recognizing the fact that the job that I would need to do would have to be within the limitations of my disability. Because, oh look, medical malfeasance. Literally about to become an amputee. But, I could turn a wrench. So, act like that's not, you know, that's not a big deal. Well, I'm pretty sure without transportation, capability, and mobility, eh, you know, any military capability is already handicapped and crippled, and, you know, chances of, you know, military readiness, right out the window. So, is this route we're going? I just, I just want to know, alright? Because the funny thing is, too, I was listening to, I was watching a video with Ring of Fire, or uh, America's Lawyer, actually, and... You know, Frank Cousins ended up mentioning that because of a lack of bipartisanship, there's literally a mass exodus of people and government in all aspects. You know, because of the factor of the entire fucking gridlock that's happened over the longest time because of people wanting to go ahead, you know, and play uh, personality politics and, you know, divisionism. Pretty much setting factions to try to justify the lack of actual, you know, progress being made. So... Like I said, draft. Ladies, you go to war. All right? Go ahead and leave the guys to have to, you know, be left here. Have to go ahead and be homemakers. Have to be the ones to go ahead and work jobs that ends up 
supporting you going to war. All right. We we going to the industrial revol uh, industrial uh, revolution era because if that's what we're doing, well, let's go ahead and do that gender swap. All right. Or is your excuse going to be no? We we need to be home. We need to go ahead without us being the ones to, you know, raise our children and everything. We're afraid of what's going to end up happening for the next generation. Understand. Half the problems that I ended up having was because of the fact that when I was younger, I made the decision to go to an Occupy Wall, uh, Occupy Wall Street peaceful protest. Didn't bring any weaponry with me. You know, went to go exercise my civil rights of being uh, First Amendment speech to peacefully assemble. All right. Ended up being surveilled and monitored for almost 20 fucking years. All right. Literally ended up going ahead and being put under a fine tooth fucking comb as far as any decision that I ended up making or anything because of being illegally surveilled, you know, breach of my Fourth Amendment rights, uh, Eighth Amendment rights being breached too, which, yeah, Rudy Giuliani's trying to dodge that lawsuit, you know, because of literal war crime of, you know, denying a fair trial, you know, while at the same time not wanting to pay for doing literal war crimes, and can't forget about the fucking stop and frisk policy that ended up going ahead and being deemed unconstitutional and being adopted by other states, who then did and so unconstitutional when the judge ended up ruling, no, you have to fucking go ahead and remedy the situation for the wrongful incarceration and selective prosecution. Well, he's trying to avoid, you know, putting his hand in his pocket, you know, because apparently, you know, drunk with no money, while at the same time taking private jets to wherever the hell he wanted to go because he was campaigning. Are, are, are you seeing my point here? You know, especially considering the factor that, you know, considering the housing crisis of 2008 and the long-term damage that ended up happening with that, you know, the lack of relief funds that ended up happening for people that ended up going ahead and getting de displaced because of these circumstances, literally the factor that, you know, the whole circumstance with climate change has it where people are already incapable in certain areas to being able to continue to live on forward with, you know, the necessity to be able to live, clean water, you know, being able to have shelter without their shelter being ripped up by natural disasters uh, caused because of, you know, pretty much the amount of money that got thrown into carbon capturing. Like, are, are you... Are you recognizing the factor that there's a lot bigger problems than just trying to go ahead and be like, well, you know, there are people that are so back in the 50s and 60s mentality-wise, well, not recognizing the whole it was a different time argument is not valid. That they're literally just causing more and more problems because of the factor that they're unwilling to go ahead and adapt to the way things need to change. You know, you literally got insurance companies that aren't willing to go ahead and even give homeowners insurance in certain states because of the natural disasters that ended up happening, as well as the, you know, clause that they ended up having as far as payouts of them having to pay out, a, you know, multi certain multiplied payouts because of acts of natural disaster. Are, are you seeing the bigger issue here? You know, especially considering the factor that it's just astounding that the last bit of bipartisanship that there's been has been Matt Gates and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez being willing to go ahead and work on legitimate legislation to get stuff fixed. Which, him getting targeted now, it's seeming like... Him being willing to actually work on the whole climate crisis, as well as, you know, actually being willing to speak out of, hey, leadership ain't leadershipping, while at the same time they're still sitting around collecting a paycheck, and the only thing that they want to do is argue, you know, hey, we're not going to go ahead and work with our enemies. Um, y y Just going ahead and trying to pretty much, you know, argue personal perspectives and divisionism within the government, you know, based on gender identity, recognize where the downfall is. 
You are a big part of the problem. When Matt Gates is more willing to get something done and actually work with people that don't identify, whether it's Democrat or Republican, to actually get something fixed, you're, you're, you're making Matt Gates look like the good guy. All right. I'm pretty sure with, you know, the whole attacks on his character and everything like that, the last thing you want to do is make Matt Gates look like the good guy, especially considering that he was one of the first people to go ahead and say, hey, we shouldn't weaponize impeachment. That does not go well. Did you not learn from the fucking Clinton era? Oh, my God. It, it seems like the guy who is apparently a drunk driving, you know, Nepo baby, you know, whose dad was a politician and basically wanted to secure his legacy because of being a complete and total narcissist. It was looking like he's more fucking effective than you are. So you, you are literally regressing back. Literally, by trying to go ahead and make this identity politics factor, the only thing you're doing is bringing an argument that ends up drawing so far back that it's like, like having to argue fucking, you know, ability and rights for people to be able to vote. You know, back to a point in time where it was a fucking argument on whether head of household voting was the way that voting should have been or if everybody should be able to vote. And literally the answer was everyone should be able to vote.